Good morning. Thanks for being here. Central to the idea of freedom is the right that we can defend ourselves against physical attack, as well as defend those that we love. The Constitution did not give us those rights. Our Creator gave us those rights, but it does put it down on paper in the Second Amendment. And the courts have interpreted that to mean an individual right to keep and bear arms for self-defense. And so I think it's important in this age of political division to know that what we're about here today is a universal right that applies to each and every man and woman, regardless of race, gender, creed, or background. And Florida led the nation in allowing for concealed carry. And that uh, extends today as we remove the government permission slip to require a permit to exercise a constitutional right. I'm pleased to be uh, joined by several people that you're going to hear from today, and I'd like to just announce them before they come up. First up, we will have Sheriff Al Nienheis from Hernando County and president of the Florida Sheriff's Association. You'll also hear from Brevard County Sheriff Wayne Ivey. I'm also pleased to be joined by our bill sponsors, Representative Chuck Brannon and Senator Jay Collins. Representative and Senator, thank you for your leadership and dedication to the pre preservation of these God-given rights. I look forward to working with each of you to pass this historic legislation. And finally, you will hear from Donna Mitchell. Donna is a military veteran and law enforcement officer who set out to make the world a better place. Donna, like many victims of abuse and violence, has a personal story about the importance of having to be pre prepared to defend yourself. Well, next up, we'll, we'll start with uh, Sheriff Ne yes, sir. Come on up. Good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative. Again, uh, for those of you here, I'm Hernando County Sheriff Al Neenheis. I happen to be this year's president of the Florida Sheriff's Association. And, you know, sheriffs have a long history of protecting the Constitution. It actually goes back in the state of Florida, back a little over 200 years. Actually, 20 years before the state even had a Constitution, Florida sheriffs were defending the rights of those enumerated in the U.S. Constitution. And one of our major focuses is ensuring domestic tranquility, and that's even mentioned in the state constitution. At the same time, we have to make sure that the rights of individuals enumerated in the first 10 amendments of our Constitution are upheld. And that can be a little bit difficult at times. It's a balancing act. But I think we can use the premise that just like accused, people that are accused rather of crime are innocent until proven guilty, I think we can assume that our citizens are gonna do the right thing when it comes to carrying and bearing arms. Our laws are focused mainly when it comes to keeping those rights in check sometimes when they come in conflict with ensuring domestic tranquility it can be a difficult thing, but we've got to look at specific acts by specific individuals when they violate that domestic tranquility. For example, the freedom of speech does not give you the right to yell fire in a crowded theater. Any more than the freedom of expression allows you to go pick up your children at an elementary school without any clothes on. There are some limits to that, but those limits should not be when it comes to bureaucracy and inhibiting those rights. And I know I can speak for my fellow sheriffs in saying that we don't know of any criminal that ever planned to do a drive-by shooting and in the process said, oh, I've got to go get my permit first. They're going to break the law regardless of whether a permit's in place or not. And I look forward to working with our prosecutors throughout the state as well as our members of our state legislature and my fellow sheriffs to make sure that when somebody does commit a violent crime, that they'll be held accountable, but not at the expense of the freedoms of those individuals who want to, as the speaker said, protect themselves. Therefore, I can say unequivocally that the Florida Sheriff's Association stands behind the speaker and other members of the uh, House and Senate that we should move forward with permitless constitutional carry. Again, thank you for your time. I appreciate our media members being here today to cover this very important topic. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey out of Brevard County. And uh, Sheriff Neenhouse is a little more eloquent than I am, so uh, <laughs> I'll just jump right into it. It's about time. 
Florida is taking this huge step. And what we're doing is checking off the box again and showing that Florida is the freedom state. It's showing that citizens have a right to protect themselves. And I want to thank the speaker, our bill sponsors, and our governor for making this a priority. What I will tell you is that government's one and only responsibility is to protect its citizens. This gives them the absolute ability to protect themselves. Criminals don't go get a permit. They don't, they don't care if they follow the law or not. Our citizens deserve the right to protect themselves at all times. This bill is that big bite. This bill gives our citizens the ability to exercise their Second Amendment, to protect themselves, their family, those around them in church, those around them at the movie theater or anywhere they might become the victim of a violent attack. I couldn't be more proud to stand here with all of our sheriffs that are committed to seeing this bill through. This bill is an important piece of legislation for our citizens to have the ability to protect themselves. As I said, criminals don't go get a permit. Not one of them. They don't care about obeying the law. Our law-abiding citizens have that immediate right guarantee and the freedom to go protect themselves. So, Mr. Speaker, thank you, sir, for, for pushing this. Thank you both to our sponsors. And as I said, we as Florida sheriffs stand solidly behind this, and we stand behind the oath that we took to protect the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the state of Florida. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good morning. Florida is a law and order state. As a 30-year law enforcement professional myself, as a former deputy U.S. Marshal, and a longtime chief investigator for the Baker County Sheriff's Office, I appreciate that we live in the free state of Florida. Here we have the freedom to speak our minds, pursue our own version of the American dream, and especially exercise our God-given constitutional rights. I spent many years working alongside the good, brave men and women in law enforcement who work every day to keep Florida free. Today, I want to thank Speaker Renner for the honor of working alongside him, our colleagues in the House and Senate, and our great governor to do, to do the same once again and continue to keep Florida free. Our right to bear arms, of course, is enshrined in the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. The bill that I will file later today continues to advance Second Amendment freedoms through legislation known as constitutional carry. I believe freedoms have the right, Floridians have the right to bear arms to protect themselves, their families, and their property without government interference. This bill is a big step to help the average law-abiding citizen to keep from having to go through the hoops of getting a permit from the government to carry their weapons. It is also not going to change who can and cannot carry a gun. People that are prohibited now will still be prohibited. Concealed permits will also not go away for those desiring a permit for reciprocity purposes. Maintaining a permit is often wise when traveling out of state, as other states may require non-residents to still have a permit from their state of residence. People don't have to carry if they don't want to, but this is a constitutional authority that people have, and they certainly shouldn't have to pay the price or pay for a piece of paper from the government to legally carry their firearm. By the way, as the sheriff said, criminals are getting guns anyway. They're breaking in houses. They're breaking in cars, and they're carrying guns illegally. They don't care what the law says. We are only giving our law-abiding citizens a simpler way to have the ability to protect themselves, their families, their homes, and their places of business. This bill will allow Floridians to conceal carry their firearm without the red tape and expense of a government license. It is only fitting that the citizens of the freest nation, freest state in the nation, be given the right to constitutional carry. Florida will not become between you and your freedom to protect yourself. I look forward to working with the speaker, my Senate partner, my Senate sponsor, and all the members of the legislature to pass this historic legislation. Thank you. <coughs> Good morning. I'd like to thank each of you for being here today. I am Jay Collins, and I'm blessed to represent Senate District 14. Speaker Renner, Representative Brennan, I'm honored to be here with both of you on this monumental moment. I'm also honored that Senate President Pasadomo has entrusted me with running the major breakthrough for our freedom in the Florida Senate. I want to publicly thank the Florida Sheriff's Association for being here today. As I've said time 
and time again, our brave men and women in law enforcement do so much to support our communities and keep us safe. I'm proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with our law enforcement and first responders. I will always have y'all's back. Thank you for all that you do each and every day. It was my distinct honor to serve in the U.S. Army for 23 years, the vast majority of that as a U.S. Army Green Beret. I have served with heroes, people who sacrificed for our nation's safety, and to ensure we protected our God-given freedoms around the world. As we stand here today, we still have men and women who are bravely defending our Constitution and the American way of life. However, the titles that mean the most to me are husband and father. I unequivocally understand that it is our responsibility to protect our families, this great state, and our blessed nation. We know that those freedoms we love are never free. They are passed down from generation to generation. We must not push off to our children those things that we can solve today. My very first lesson as a Green Beret was that it's incumbent on each of us to leave things better than we found it. Here in the free state of Florida, we are doing just that. Thanks to the leadership of Governor DeSantis, who has repeatedly stood up for individual rights and freedoms, we will take this monumental step to ensure that government, government does not interfere with a law-abiding citizen's ability to protect themselves and their families. I look forward to codifying our God-given and constitutional right to bear arms. I look forward to working with both of you. May God bless each of you, and may God continue to bless this great state. Del Presto Liber. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Donna Michaels. I grew up the daughter of a violent, mentally ill father. So I joined the US Navy right out of high school with the hope of a better life and to serve my country, which had been a long family tradition. At the age of 19, shortly after arriving at my first duty station in the Azores, I was violently raped while being sleeping alone in my barracks room by a first class petty officer. He entered my room with a master key. It's important to know that I do not blame the Navy for what happened to me. In fact, I am extremely grateful to the Naval Special Warfare Community, or the Navy SEALs, for teaching me the skills necessary to su succeed in life. Upon leaving the Navy at the age of 22, my first priority was to buy a gun so I could feel safe living on my own. I lived in another state at the time, and a permit wasn't required because the Second Amendment was respected and supported. In 2021, I retired, sorry, upon leaving the Navy at the age of 22, my first, I read that one, I apologize y'all, this is my first time doing this. <laughs> in 2021, I retired after 21 years in law enforcement. I am keenly aware that it, one in four women will become a victim of sexual battery. Whether it's in the military, a college campus, arriving home after work, or simply jogging in a park. Those are simply the statistics. 80% of victims do not report their attacks because of fear and shame. I was one of them. In hindsight, I realized I became a law enforcement officer because I wanted to help others find the justice they deserved for the violent crimes that they had experienced. Sadly, over the years, I've seen the justice system fail too many times. I've also seen people stopped in their tracks when someone has been able to protect themselves with a, fire, with a firearm. The vast majority of these incidents are not reported in detail to the public for privacy reasons because the media chooses not to report them without the victim's information. Just because it doesn't make the news, doesn't mean it didn't happen. Bad people will commit evil acts despite what the laws say. For this reason, law-abiding citizens should have every right to protect themselves from those who wish to commit violent crimes. No prison sentence in the world will ever heal the wounds that come with being a sexual assault victim. Just like no sentence will ever bring back the life of an innocent loved one. I'm the mother of an amazing 17-year-old daughter that any parent would be proud of on so many reasons. 
mostly for her strong moral compass. She's beginning to prepare for college and the idea of her leaving the safety of our home and going into the world with no way to protect herself terrifies me. I do not have the luxury of blissful ignorance when it comes to what goes on in the real world. I am cursed with the knowledge of knowing how many evil hearts walk among us every single day looking for their next easy target. This is precisely why we need to pass the constitutional carry bill so that our sons and daughters have the ability to protect themselves from evil and leveling the playing field with a gun and the life and preserving the life that they, the happiness that they deserve. Shortly after retiring from law enforcement, I applied, my concealed, I applied for my concealed carry permit and I was denied for unknown reasons. To make a very long story short, after countless phone calls and emails to the Department of Agriculture, I finally received my permit nine months later, which never should have been denied in the first place. The time it took to get my permit was completely inexcusable given I was recently a retired law enforcement officer and a state firearms instructor. I can't imagine what the average citizen must go through in trying to acquire a permit and I don't want to know. It is these types of government failures that put good citizens in the position of choosing between following the laws or protecting themselves and their families. If there is one thing I've learned in my law enforcement career, it is rare that the police can respond to a violent crime in time to protect those in need. The constitutional carry bill will provide good citizens the ability to defend themselves until law enforcement can arrive. I would like to sincerely thank Speaker Renner for the opportunity to speak about this extremely important issue and for supporting the citizens of Florida by leveling the playing field when it comes to defending ourselves and our families. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Or maybe for one of the sheriffs, uh, 26 other states have already passed legislation like this. Do you guys have any evidence or data to back up that there was a crime reduction or perhaps a reduction in mass shootings that may make your job easier by enacting this legislation? I mean, we, we see incidents every day where law-abiding citizens that are armed with the ability to protect themselves uh, interrupt active shooters, interrupt armed robberies, um, uh, are able to protect themselves in all sorts of different scenarios. So, you know, as, as we see these different scenarios unfold, um, what we know is that the best law enforcement agencies in the country have response times in minutes. If you go to San Bernardino, California, where years ago the shooting happened, law enforcement arrived in four minutes. That's an incredible response time. Fourteen people were killed in that four minutes. So what we know is that the ability to protect our citizens, the best ability to protect our citizens, is to give them the ability to protect themselves, to, to teach them how to protect. We do a class, self-defense through tactical shooting and decision making. I want our citizens to know how to protect themselves, how to protect their family. And so we see it unfold all the time, and you're seeing it actually unfold more and more where active shooters are being interrupted. There was just an incident, armed robbery, that occurred out in Texas. The, the individual that was in there was concealed carry and was able to uh, stop the robbery and those that were in the immediate threat. So, yeah, we see it all the time. Does this bill legalize open carry? No, it, it does not. This is, this is permitless carry, and maybe the speaker might want to talk a little bit to the, the specifics of the bill, but this is, this is permit, permitless constitutional carry, which um, basically, as I said earlier, the criminals aren't going to get a permit. They're carrying guns. We see it every day. Um, we go out and our deputies respond uh, or, or do traffic stops and the criminals have guns. Criminals that should have never had a gun in the first place are, are still been arrested, out of jail, and still have the guns. This is our citizens we're talking about, law-abiding citizens that now don't have to go through a permit process to exercise their constitutional right. Part of the permitting process is a training requirement. Do you see this legislation as keeping a training requirement or would that go away? It, it, 
it, nothing that is contained in the permit requirement, everything would go away. So there's no permit required. As the sheriff just stated, I took a great NRA course on gun safety. Anybody that is a gun owner and uses guns knows that safety comes first. Last thing you want to do is be on a hunt with somebody who doesn't understand how, what a safety is. Um, so I think that's important, but it's not required. Um, and so the permit and all, all aspects of that permit would go away. So is that a concern in that you're going to have more people uh, willing to purchase guns that maybe do not have a level of proficiency? Not only will you have more guns in Florida, you'll have more people with guns that don't really, maybe don't have really a proficiency. Here's what I would say is that we don't operate in a vacuum. What's happening in our society right now is, is a defund the police 2.0 with these uh, cities and counties that are, uh, and, and woke prosecutors that are advocating for no bail on third degree felons. And so I don't think there's ever been a time in, our, in, my, in my history here on earth that we've needed uh, the right to bear arms for individuals more than we do now. Because uh, our, some of our elected officials are creating an unsafe environment uh, that undermines law and order, even including here in Florida. And we're going to address that uh, this year in terms of bail reform and making sure that we don't have convicted or felons walking out with no bail and no responsibility to reappear. And so for that reason, as long as we have that, we need to make sure that we put guns in the hands of the good men and women, the law-abiding men and women who have a right to defend themselves and defend others. <coughs> and so uh, in the coming weeks, uh, we will be introducing additional legislation, not only to go after uh, gun crime, people that are stealing guns out of cars, as the sheriff mentioned, and using them in gang violence, but also to continue to expand the rights for law-abiding citizens. Uh, no, I don't regret the vote, but I will tell you it was a difficult vote because I regret the pieces in the in the bill that that basically restrict the rights of law-abiding people. And the typical uh, reflexive reaction is when something happens is to run out and and restrict all law-abiding citizens in addition to that narrow scope of people who are criminals. And as the sheriffs before me said, criminals could care less about gun laws. They could care less. If they're going to go murder somebody, they could care less about getting a permit, or whether they're under 21 or any of those things. And so they're going to steal a gun, they're going to use a gun illegally, and we're going to go aggressively and hard against those people. But at the same time, we, we should uh, be looking at uh, making sure that we do not restrict the rights of the law-abiding citizens to uh, operate uh, a weapon if they need to in self-defense. And so that bill, however, did some other good things, which ended uh, gun-free zones, which is where we see time and time again these mass shootings happen where they know people are vulnerable. And so what I liked about that bill, uh, you know, and you don't get to pick you don't get to pick the whole bill. You get to vote for the bill, the good, the bad, and there were some good and bad in that bill. What it did that I liked is it ended gun-free zones. And it provided for the opportunity for guardians. I think we ought to revisit that and make sure that we have uh, someone that can, uh, can, can effectively defend our children in the event of, of uh, them coming in harm's way. Does the legislation allow for permits if someone wants one? I yes. I ask because of there's some reciprocity. Yeah. I understand it. You just get into that specifically. It does. It, it allows you, if you want, to, to keep getting a concealed weapons permit. Uh, so if a state requires that uh, to extend reciprocity, uh, we will not uh, on our end. So we will be constitutional carry. And so that, that allows that, that uh, people are here lawfully. They're not a convicted felon. You just have to go through a background check if you're buying a gun, that kind of thing. But you can operate a gun here in Florida as well. Is there some be able to tell you know, whether somebody who's carrying a gun is, is a criminal or an citizen, you know, good person with a gun versus a bad person. If there's no permit required... Do one of you guys want to take that? I mean, I think that's an easy answer. I think, but. Yeah, I think I can address that. We, we know somebody's a criminal when they commit a criminal act. And whether they have a permit or not, um, they may or may not be a criminal. Those two things are, are not mutually exclusive, that if you have a permit, you're not a criminal, and if you don't have a permit, you're automatically a criminal. So I think we have to base, base it on their current act that they're committing right now, as well as any previous acts they committed, i.e. they're a convicted felon at that point, uh, and we run into that today, 
over and over and over again convicted felons uh, in the process of committing a serious crime are also carrying a weapon. And as was alluded to earlier, uh, they really don't have any regard for whether uh, they get their permit before they commit that crime. I think it's important to clarify a little bit of what the speaker said is most criminals don't care a lot about laws unless they know that they're going to spend significant time in prison. And I think every sheriff here can tell you that uh, that criminals tend to change their behavior based on how serious the penalty is. And so that's something that fortunately in Florida, if you're going to commit a violent crime with a gun, uh, you're going to be held accountable for that. And so I think that's the difference. Will there be an effort to raise the penalty for you know, criminalizing with a gun? They're already pretty serious, but I'll let the speaker address the, the, that. The answer to that question is an affirmative yes. And so, as I said, stay tuned. Uh, this is this is one bill uh, in one session, so more to come on both fronts, both uh, protecting the law-abiding and expanding their rights, as well as going hard after those that steal guns, use them in criminal acts, which I think everybody in this room is in favor of making sure we address. Thank you very much.